Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while. Uh, I think my last one was on my shopping trips. Oh, you know, when you think it can't get worse, it does. We're still in phase one, can't seem to get out of it. They blame it on masks. I don't, but you know, whatever. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about a few things. I saw a post on Facebook by a friend and it kind of made me sad. And I was like, oh, I get it, you know. I kind of did a video on this before. Go back and watch it. Uh, you know, what's going to happen next, you know. This is way back, too. We're in June now. And uh, some states have moved on. Uh, some states, like mine, the central part of the state, we just can't seem to get out of it. And it's causing a lot of problems. Um, like... I went into the five steps of grief in one of those videos and I said, oh yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Well, the thing with that is you can redo those steps of grief. You feel like you're at acceptance, right? The last one. And then you find you're right back at depression or, you know, right back in denial, you know. Uh, and it's okay. You can go through them over and over. That's the process. Life has some events that are not so nice for us, right? Uh, some of them come and hit us blindsided, like we didn't see it coming. Some of them you can see coming, and um, we wonder, you know, what's next? What are we going to do? Uh, we want things back the way they were, and in my video, remember I said we can't get back. Here's a few examples for me. Um, I got DVT in 2007 and of course that's one of those signs you could see coming but I didn't know. Uh, my leg was sore that day. It's a long story. I'm going to make it really short. And we were leaving for camping and then I just got worse and worse and I've explained it to you before. And Sunday we came home and I went to the hospital and they did an ultrasound and found that I had a blood clot. Um, I didn't know for eight months that it would be occlusive DVT, which is complete blockage of the deep vein. Uh, so I'm in year 13. I'm on warfarin for life. Uh, I guess I have a hereditary situation in my blood where, you know, it, it clots too much. Uh, there was some other circumstances, and, and I think I've described that before. A long trip and being on birth control. What happened, though, was I read too much, and like I explained before, doctor said, quit doing that, quit going on the internet. But, you know, when you don't know something and you want to research it, you want to find out what's going on, and then um, it just made, it got me to where I didn't know what was going to happen to me. I could die. I mean, uh, they say up to 600,000 people die from blood clots every year. Um, it's really high up there. Uh, I think cancer, or heart disease number one, then cancer, and then, you know, whatever. But blood clots are way up there. Um, I got depressed. Uh, my mom blamed it on the fact that I wasn't on hormones anymore. I was 49 at the time, and I I didn't believe her because I, I just had this feeling. You know what I mean? I just had this feeling, and I cried to my doctor, and I was like, I don't know what's wrong. He put me on an antidepressant. I told you before that it helped me, but... He told me, it's the unknown, Cindy. You don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. And 13 years later, oh, I still don't know. And so, but I had to learn to deal with it, right? And this is how we learn these hard life events. My friend Cheryl, she was my neighbor, and her daughter was involved in a very tragic accident right before Christmas in 2018. Uh, she was only 21 years old, um, rather inexperienced driver with no fear, and it was an icy morning and she was driving into work and she lost control of her car and it went across the, the road and, and flipped and went into a, a ditch. And her boyfriend was right behind her and he saw the whole thing. He 
got off the road, pulled her out, called 911, um, and she ended up going to Harborview in Seattle, and she succumbed to her injuries in just under three weeks, I think it was. And, um, you know, Cheryl was up there back and forth, back and forth, and it was a, not a good winter. Uh, we live like two and a half hours from Seattle, and so, you know, poor Cheryl had to go back and forth. Why? Because her husband, Kevin, had been battling cancer for a few years and he had gotten to the point where he's like, I just can't do this anymore, you know. So he gave up treatment and was living his life. And he was in a facility and he would do badly and then he would get over that hump and then he would do badly and it, and this is all going on for Cheryl. So we went to the funeral. Um, it was standing room only. We couldn't even get near the auditorium. We stood in the hall. And afterwards, we went outside, and somebody was wheeling Kevin by us, um, some friends of theirs, and we kind of followed them over, and we were talking to Kevin, and um, he didn't look very good. <laughs> and I wanted to go see him, but it was just really hard for me. I, I just couldn't. We teased about bringing him beer. You know, they let him have whatever he wanted in the facility. And anyway, he, he died about... Mm, I'm thinking about five or six weeks after that. So Cheryl's now lost her 21-year-old daughter, now her husband. Back track to October of that year, 2018, Cheryl's mom um, had been battling pancreatic cancer and went up to Seattle for surgery. Uh, and uh, they thought it was a good good surgery you know things went well and that was October okay um, a week before Mother's Day uh, Cheryl put her in this contest here and she won the problem is she died Friday before Mother's Day so Cheryl has lost her 21 year old daughter her husband and now her mom, all in the span of five months. And she's lamenting on Facebook, as she should. And she built a nice little website for Kelsey and whatnot. But that's not where it ends. The next year, last year, she lost her dad to cancer. So... The grieving process that Cheryl has gone through is personal. It's her own, right? And people criticized her. It was terrible, and she would get really mad at him. And I supported her, and I tried to you know, tell her, look, this isn't our plan, this is God's plan, and we don't know why. Um, but you have to grieve the way you have to grieve. I cannot imagine. I mean, I, I don't wanna say I've been blessed with you know, a good life, things haven't happened. My dad passed away. I've had aunts and uncles passed away. But, you know, I've had nine surgeries, broken leg, TBT. I've had situations that weren't so nice. But it's in how we react. It's in how we carry on. Some people can't see the change coming. They can't wait for the change coming. It's too overwhelming, and they end it for themselves. And, of course, we're left with the grief of that. Um, I've had friends who lost friends through suicide, and they're saying, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people have taken their lives during this COVID era. And it's because they don't see any hope, and it's too painful, and they cannot deal with it um, for various reasons. We probably will never know. Uh, and it's hard to understand suicide it alone, you know, try to figure out why a person did it. And I want you to go back and, and look at that video that I, that I did on, you know, the unknown. We don't know what's next. Your mind plays games with you. <laughs> it's like when I went on the keto diet at 209 pounds, wanted to lose weight. Uh, your mind plays games with you when you're on a diet. Do you start, mm, this is where the bargaining in the 
um, five steps of grief comes in, you make bargains. Oh, I'm just going to eat this waffle this morning, and then tonight I'm going to have a salad. Those bargainings never work, <laughs> you know, and your mind plays games with you. I personally distracted myself, which is my next topic. I'm jumping ahead, but that's okay. When your mind is um, playing games with you and wandering and taking you to places you don't want it to go, but you can't stop it, you need a distraction. Um, I watched a lot of videos, uh, health videos, and I learned a lot. I took notes. I bought the right food. I concentrated on eating healthy and losing the weight. And you know the process because I've told you before. And it's uncomfortable, right? Our situations are, are anything but comfortable. Uh, you know, with this COVID thing, uh, we are thrown into an uncomfortable situation that we don't know what to do or how to deal with. So in my area, like I said, wear the mask, wear the mask. I'm sorry, that's not the answer. Um, our community is one of five, and our state is one of five that is really bad, right? What did we do wrong? What did they do right? We really don't know. Why did wearing masks in this community help and, and not wearing them not help? We don't know what they did. We don't know if they had a high agricultural uh, population like we do here. All right, we have a big agriculture community. They work together, they live together. And for the majority of the cases, that's where it's spreading and at. Um, they give the race uh, breakdown and the age and all that. And you look at that and you go, wow. Kind of tells you something. But then you look at another place like Newport, Oregon, where my friends work. Uh, one unit, uh, 126 people tested positive. And my friend got it and he took it home to his wife and she got it. They're getting over it. Um, they're obviously quarantined and uh, they're going to be fine. It's not fun. I can tell you he has asthma and some other health issues and she has MS. Okay. But they're going to be fine. Now my other friend that works a couple blocks away or, or block away, whatever, in a totally different area. Um, he's in charge of the icing, you know, ice for the the seafood company, they tested 100% negative. Well, what did they do that caused 126 to have it? And what did they do? We're 100% at this time, as of like a week ago, negative. We don't know. So people thrust their opinions at you, right? Wear the mask, don't wear the mask. And I have my own opinion. And people don't agree with me, but I don't really care. I did the research, right? That's what we do. We do research. Okay. Your mind takes you to places you don't want to go. Um, if, a, if the TV is one of your distractions, I want you to stop it right now. If Facebook is one of your distractions, I want you to stop it right now. I go in and out, right? I'm not perfect. I stay off Facebook a couple days, I jump in, and then I get all depressed again, and then I get upset, and then I get angry, and then I comment, and then people comment on my comment, and then I comment. You know what I mean? It's a vicious cycle, and everybody's got an idea. And I get to the point where I don't even care what they said. Oh, so-and-so commented on your deal. Don't care. I don't go back. Sometimes I've gone back and seen that people support my comment. I'm like, thank you, you know, thank you for supporting me. But I got to pull back again. You know, you get so wrapped up in it, and it's just not that important. And we all have friends that post happy little raspberry flower posy. I'm on the, up in the mountains having a good time, and I'm walking, and I'm running, and life is great. I guess I'm just not like that, you know? I'm a fighter. I like to get in and fight. I was raised that way. Everybody's different. And I, I kind of envy them. It's like, how can you just get on Facebook and post this and not read and scroll? I want to be like them. So then um, I've turned off the TV. Well, I don't watch TV anyway. You know that. I've started exercising. So what happened to me? April, 
I went screw it month, right? I went from, okay, acceptance, I'm going to eat and drink my way back to a size 14, almost 16. And I did. I gained weight. And on Mother's Day, I saw a picture of myself and I went, what have I done? What have I done? Gradual, right? The event that gradually comes and you don't see it. So I started that next day on Monday, changing my diet again, quitting all the crap. It wasn't crap. It was like, mm, I'll just have spaghetti noodles tonight. And I'll just have some mashed potatoes just tonight. But I started exercising, uh, walking Lulu every day, coming home. I started my Wii back up, Wii Fit and Wii Sports. I love it, having fun, um, listening to music and kind of doing some exercises to that. Um, I have been watching a really good series on the Black Plague. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime. So good. Excuse me. I hate it when people do this, but my throat. Got a cold last week. Went into my throat and lungs again. But I'm, I'm pretty much over it. <coughs> Almost. So you can go out of town. I uh, see a lot of people going out of town camping again. Uh, camping in our state parks finally opened June 1st. We have reservations for Sunday for Father's Day. And we're going with some friends and my daughter and son-in-law and grandkids. So that'll be nice to get away, you know. Um, <laughs> phase one, people going into phase two areas <laughs> or phase three areas. I don't know if that defeats the purpose, but they weren't thinking this. If you open st states in phases, um, it might do more damage. I don't know. I'm going to try to keep going. I might have to stop. But anyway, <coughs> gosh, I've been good. You know, when we start talking, it happens. So anyway, people getting out of town, working their gardens. I have a garden. Loving my garden. It's doing really well. So my point of this video is if you want to post on Facebook, I'm having a difficult day. I'm not feeling really well. I'm not doing really well with the COVID thing. That's fine. Don't bottle it up. Express yourself and then let people help you. It's hard to get help from people. It's hard to ask. It's hard to, you know, then you read people's comments and they're generally very nice you know empathy we're all in this they say we're in this we're not in this boat we're in this storm people have more empathy now than ever because we're all going through it and i said before and someone disagreed with me but i don't care sympathy is where i'm sorry this is happening to you and empathy is i know exactly how you feel I'm going through the same thing. And so accept, you know, people's comments and help. It will pass. Okay, you're going to have another feeling come along and go right over the top of it. It may be, screw it, it's Friday night, I'm having a margarita. Been there. Um, or it may be something else. But I'll tell you what, the one thing that has helped me a lot is exercise. It raises your endorphins and all that other stuff you've heard about for forever and ever. What starts out is not really the funnest thing to do. I love now, like, if I can't, I'm like, oh, I can't. I can't walk Lulu today. I got to take mom to the grocery store. Or, you know, I can't do my routine that I do with the Wii in the morning because I've got to do all these other things. And... <clears throat> that gets me upset, which is a good thing because I really am enjoying it. I'm trying to get stronger. You know, I'm going to be 62 and I've told you before, I've never been into exercise, but I need to strengthen my muscles. I've watched my mom go downhill over the last six years. I've seen her get weaker and weaker. People, when she was 80, people could not believe she was 80. They're like, I can't believe your mom's 80. She looks great. Well, there's been some things happen in you know, now she's just scary. 
you know, she fell in January of last year and broke a bone in her hand and she face planted like the year before. I mean, it's, it's scary when your parents get old, but she's lost a lot of strength in her legs <clears throat> and in her arms and stuff. And she has a garden, lives in her own house. She's trying to do the best she can. <laughs> and then poor Hannah, her dog, jumps off the freezer where she was drying her. Why? Because she didn't wait for me to help her bathe the dog. And she tore a ligament, had to have surgery. <laughs> so she's been distracted with Hannah trying to take care of her. But I guess my point to you is this. It's not going to change. We don't know where this is going to end. The plague, there were three plagues. Um, not as bad as the first. Uh, the second wave came, like every 10 years, a, a wave of the plague came. And people had to deal with it. But I mean, the first one lasted like five years. And some areas lost no people, some areas lost 100%, villages completely wiped out. 50, 60, 70, 80% of towns, people died. I mean, it's a really good um, video. I want you to watch it on um, <clears throat> uh, Prime. It's very good. Uh, the Black Plague, it's very good. And, and you know, we don't know where it's going to end or when it's going to end. We just need to get through it. All right, we're ticked off because they can do protests, but our hometown places can't open. We can't go to church. And that's, you know, we have a right to be ticked off about that, but there's nothing we can do about it. It's not gonna change until this thing dies out. And then it might come back. We don't know, right? The unknown. Well, if we could know everything, we'd be God, you know, or some of these fortune tellers think they know everything and they can see stuff. We don't know. We're in God's hands. And someday we're going to be back to the new normal I talked about in my video. Okay? We're learning as we go. And so I want you to think about these things and pray, you know, seek God's will read your Bible, listen to some good music. That always cheers me up. And so I bid you adieu, and I hope you have a nice day, a nice week, and take care.